Good morning, everyone. I'm your welcoming elder today. My name is Dr. Jacqueline Gupta Parriott. And uh, today is 29th May, and it's a glorious day. In fact, it was um, a little cool earlier here, but now it's nice and warm, and I hope you're comfortable. Um, so to start off, we will start with a call of worship. And uh, I will ask Fab to set that up on the top there. Yeah, so I'll be the leader and then you respond accordingly, okay? All right. <clears throat> Jesus has ascended to heaven and shouts of joy. Yes, the sounding of heavenly trumpets. Sing praises to the Lord. To our Lord. For Jesus is the king of all kings. We sing praises to our king. Jesus is seated on his throne. Praises to God on his throne. Hallelujah. I welcome once again um, Robert Hayashi, who will be leading us in uh, our worship service today. And we're delighted to have him back with us. And here we are. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Bad camera. Well, it should be also noted that today, um, our brother Fabrizio has kindly volunteered to step into the breach and uh, run the uh, recording and uh, PowerPoint presentation today uh, while Alan and his family are away. So welcome, welcome to God's house. It is uh, wonderful to see all of you with us this day. Um, now having heard God's call to come and worship, uh, please join me in asking God to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with a short prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, as we worship you today, we ask that you stretch our imaginations to sense the majesty and mystery of Jesus's ascension. Help us to understand and believe how Jesus's presence in heaven can give us confidence in our praying and hope in our living. Through Jesus, our Lord, we pray, and all God's people said, amen. And so on this Ascension Sunday, let us raise our voices to the Lord and praise him with our adoration. With our opening hymn, I Stand Amazed. And I would invite all those in the congregation who are able to please stand. Our opening worship song, I Stand Amazed. <laughs> I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean He sang, singing Oh, 
And so, my friends, having sung our praises to the Lord our God, let us now come before Him with joy and gratitude in our hearts and praise Him. Praise Him with our words of adoration and with a spirit in need of forgiveness and with an honesty about whom we are. Let us come before him and bow down and confess our sins. Let us join our hearts once more in prayer. Let us pray. God of majesty, by raising your son from the dead, you defeated the power of sin and death, and you gave us new hope. By his ascension, you brought your son into the glory of heaven to rule over all things, and to prepare a place for us. In his departure from his disciples, Christ bestowed upon them and upon us the spirit of truth. Lift up our hearts to heaven today so that we may be joyful in your son's ascension and worship him in all his glory. Righteous God, you have crowned Jesus Christ, Lord of all, and yet we confess that we have not bowed before him and are slow to acknowledge his rule in our daily living. We are instead blinded by the powers of this world, greed, selfishness, and pride, and fail to be governed by your justice, grace, and love. Most gracious God, bend your ear to us now, as we confess our sins to you in this moment of silence, as we bring to you our words of confession, too painful to say aloud. Dear God, forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear. In your mercy, forgive us. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Restore to us this day the joy of your we may walk humbly and faithfully with you, O oh God, forever guided by your light. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Well, my sisters and brothers, hear the good news. In the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we are assured that there is no sin so terrible that God cannot forgive. No hurt so terrible that God cannot heal. God accepts, God forgives, and God sets free. Let us receive now the forgiving love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so as God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other 
by making the sign of peace. May the peace and hope of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Well, today in our time with our youth and all those who are young, young at heart, I thought I would talk a little bit about the Ascension. Uh, so to Isabel and, and Antonio, get it right? Okay, <laughs> we've just met, so, and I'm terrible with names. Those of you who know me know I'm terrible with names. Um, so this, I hope, will help you guys to understand what we mean by the Ascension when we talk about the ascension of Jesus in the church. Well, ascension is a big fancy word we use in the church to really just mean to rise up or go up. Um, I like to think of a balloon, you know, filled with helium, like the type of balloon that you might get on your birthday, um, that if you let it go, it sort of rises gracefully into the sky. Um, or um, one of my favorite movies, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Have you guys ever seen the movie Up? Yes? Okay, mom and dad are saying, yep. Okay. So do you remember when uh, his house in Up had all those balloons and like sort of just floated up into the sky, right? That's the kind of the same thing where when we talk about Jesus ascending into heaven, he goes up into the sky. But it might be hard for you, and I know it's hard for me, for sure, to sort of picture how Jesus was taken up into the sky, because, well, it's not something we see every day in our lives, right? We don't see people floating up into the sky. And even the Bible, when we read the Bible, it doesn't really give us a, a detailed description of how that happened. Uh, we know that when we read in the book of Acts that Jesus was taken up into, a up into heaven in a cloud. So a cloud surrounded him. So I imagine one of those big, white, fluffy clouds, right? And Jesus was taken up in that, and he went up into heaven. Now, the important thing to remember about the ascension and the importance of Jesus going up into heaven is that it reminds us that that's what God wants for us to. He wants all his children to be gathered with him in heaven one day. And that's a really, really important message that we often forget in the church um, about the ascension of Jesus. And that's why we celebrate and mark the ascension of Jesus on Ascension Sunday. And if we confess our sins to, to God and we ask Jesus for forgiveness and we acknowledge Jesus as our savior, then we can forever live in God's promise to us that one day, one day for all of us, a long, 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 long time from now, when we die, we too will be taken up into heaven, just like Jesus. And that's the importance of today, Ascension Sunday, and the importance of the reminder that Jesus has for us when he ascended to heaven. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us that we too can be with you and Jesus in heaven. You know, until then, may we, we live our lives like Jesus by loving and serving others in your name, just as Jesus did. And so we ask your blessing upon all those in need and ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Now, I am reminded as well that uh, for you two who are here with us today, there are materials. Um, at the back of the sanctuary that Naomi would be happy to give you if you want to um, do some um, puzzles or coloring um, while the rest of the service is going on. And you're more than welcome at any time. Don't feel shy. Just get up anytime or mom and dad, you can get up any time during the service and go and get those materials if you wish to. Right? <laughs> okay, okay, great. And so my friends, let us now hear God's holy word. Oh, again, um, in my welcome, I forgot to mention that we, we that Alan is away this week and probably away next week too. So um, we are so grateful to Fab who's uh, stepped in in his shoes and we did a crash kind of course yesterday. So kind of <laughs> bear with us. Thank you, Fab.
All right. Let us pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. May our hearts and spirits listen for your will for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the first part of the Bible reading is um, a responsive um, reading. It's from Psalm 47. So I'll read the first part. And uh, yes, there it's on. And then um, the congregation, the second, and so on and so forth. Just for the Psalm. Okay. So Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord Most High is awesome, the great king over all the earth. He subdued nations under us, peoples under our feet. He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises, sing praises to, to God. God, sing, sing praises. praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. God reigns over the nations, God is seated on his holy throne. The nobles of the nations assemble as the people of the God of Abraham, for the kings of the earth belong to God, he is greatly exalted. The second part of the reading is from Luke 24, chapter 44 to 49. That's Luke 24, 44 to 49. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And the third part of the reading today is from Acts 1, verses 9 to 11. That's Acts 1, 9 to 11. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back Would in you the like same way you have seen him piano? go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the next hymn is the choral anthem. <clears throat> the congregation can remain seated uh, for the choral anthem. Uh, please sing if you wish to, or let the words just wash over you.
Holy God, through your word and the gift of your spirit, open our minds to greater understanding, our hearts to deeper love, and our wills for greater service. Through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh. Amen. Well, today's message is entitled, Blinded by the Light. Have you ever wondered what it would have been like to be one of the disciples who saw the resurrected Jesus? You know, I'm sure we have accounts of that in scripture, but have you ever wondered how you would have reacted? Would you be like some of the disciples and not recognize him? Or would you be afraid of him? Or would you doubt him? Or would you call out to him with welcome, embrace him, or fall down on your knees before him? It's funny that we pridefully think that our 21st century minds are so much more developed than, our, than those of our biblical ancestors. And yet I believe we would have some of the very same reactions to the resurrected Jesus as the disciples did. And as I pondered on that question of how I might react, I came to think that I would simply be blinded by the light of Christ. Blinded by the light of Christ and able to do anything else than be awestruck by his presence. The former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, explains it this way. Imagine what it is like when you first wake up in the morning, when you open your eyes to the bright light of the sun shining through your bedroom window. All you are conscious of when you first open your eyes is the brightness of the light itself. Only gradually do your eyes adjust so that you can see the other objects in the bedroom that are illuminated by the light. It is the same with the resurrected Jesus. His presence was so blinding, so encompassing, that all the disciples could be was conscious of him. Jesus' 
presence was so blinding, so encompassing, that all the disciples could be conscious of was him. Well, that's the way I think I might react. It would be as if I was frozen in that moment where all I could see was the light of Jesus. You know, the rest of the broken world would miraculously fall away. And I would forever be blinded by the all-encompassing love and light of Christ. Now, I ask you, doesn't that sound wonderful? To live solely in the love and light of Jesus? To no longer have to see and deal with the pain and, and hurt we often find in this world of ours. What a, what a wonderful life we would live being blinded by the light. But you see, my friends, that is why the ascension is so theologically important to us in our life as modern-day disciples of Christ. Archbishop Williams tells us why as he writes, the ascension was the moment when his light, that blinding light, receded into the background. Instead of Jesus being our focus, Jesus becomes the one who illuminates the rest of the world for us to see. So we become conscious of the world through him. Jesus is the light we see by. We see the world in a new way because we see it through him. See it with his eyes. We see it with his eyes. We see the world with the eyes of Christ. Well, I will admit that for me, this is a much harder thing for me to imagine. It was far easier for me to imagine being blinded by the radiant light of Jesus. How would I see the world with the eyes of Christ? Well, my first thought is that my eyes would be truly open to the pain and suffering around me. Now, I'm not talking about the kind of pain and suffering that my eyes normally see the kind of pain and suffering that I can bear to see, the kind of pain and suffering that I can shrug off and rationalize because, well, that's just the way the world works. Perhaps you know it too, the kind of self-sanitized pain and suffering that allows us to carry on with our daily lives and do nothing to alleviate that pain and suffering. Instead, I believe my eyes would be opened to the kind of pain and suffering that Christ Jesus sees. The gut-wrenching, heartbreaking, soul-crushing kind of pain and suffering. The kind of pain and suffering that humans do to each other or allow to go on when we are at our most cruel, most inhumane, most evil. The kind of pain and suffering we inflict upon each other when we do not see the other person as a fellow human being or a fellow child of God. Rather, we see them simply as an object, an object to be vilified, raped, tortured, and exterminated. It's the kind of pain and suffering that a mother or father feels when they watch helplessly as their child starves to death, when there is food in the world that goes to waste, or when their child suffers in pain and agony, 
but they are too poor to afford the medical treatment. Or when their child faces a life of hopelessness and poverty because they're not able to be educated and go to school in a world where access to humanity's collective knowledge is just a click away. It is the kind of pain and suffering that I'm not sure I could bear. It's the kind of pain and suffering that makes it easier for me to want to stay blinded by the light, to stay blissfully ignorant of the extreme pain and suffering all around me. Well, it was like that for the disciples in the book of Acts, who stood there gazing up towards heaven, blinded by the light of the ascension, stood there looking up towards heaven in wonder and in amazement. Are we to be equally blinded by the light? I think not. For why then in the following verse in Acts would the two angels dressed in white robes challenge the disciples by saying, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? Well, likewise, the angels challenge us not to be blinded by the light, but to turn our gaze elsewhere, to open our eyes and see the world through the eyes of Christ. And yes, my brothers and sisters, we will see the horrors of our inhumanity. And yes, we will see evil in our midst. And yes, we will surely see things that will be hard for us to bear witness to. But my sisters and brothers, we shall also see the glory of God the love of God and the mercy of God. Seeing with the eyes of Christ also means seeing the world as God intends it to be. And that is why Christ had to ascend to his place at the right hand of God. That is why theologically the ascension is of utmost importance to us. Without it, all the other events in the life and death of Jesus just sort of dangle like an unresolved plot line in a poorly constructed mystery novel. The reason for us to view the ascension of Jesus with such importance is that his ascent into heaven brings closure to both his prophetic teaching ministry and to the mystical meaning of his death and resurrection that brought salvation and a new beginning to the world. His ascension allows us to begin to see this new transformed world. The ascension constitutes the closing of this sweeping 40 day movement that brings the obedient Christ, not just from the grave to the skies, but from chaos and godlessness to the place of highest honor and righteousness at the right hand of the Father. The distance that is bridged in that moment, in that movement from resurrection to ascension, is not measured in the number of miles from earth to heaven, but is measured in the amount of evil and sin that separates us from God. It is not the force of gravity that Jesus overcomes, but the forces of sin and death and evil. As the famous 20th century theologian Jürgen Moltmann writes, Jesus was raised into the coming glory of the Father. He has risen into the coming kingdom of God. For it is through his ascension where our eyes have been opened to finally see the coming glory of the kingdom of God, to see glimpses of what that kingdom 
would look like so we can work faithfully to bring that kingdom about in our world today. Now we can't allow ourselves to again be blinded by the light of the coming glory of God's kingdom. We can't allow ourselves to ignore the pain and and suffering in the world around us or to sanitize it for our comfort. Instead, Instead, we must let the light of Christ illuminate our world so we may see it through the eyes of Christ. And we must also allow the light of Christ to illuminate our very own lives so we may see our lives as Christ sees it, how he sees us responding to what we see in the world with his eyes as his followers. No longer blinded by the light, we can also see more fully that God is actively at work redeeming all humanity and that we too have a role to play in this redemptive work. We are not to stand idly by looking up towards heaven, being blinded by the light as the disciples were. Jesus opens our eyes to what he sees and calls us into his active ministry. Our role in this ministry is the same as the disciples, to be an active witness to God's merciful act of love. In today's passage, my friends, Jesus affirms that we are his witnesses. We are the ones who will go out into the world and see through his eyes and cast his light on injustice and oppression and and poverty and attest to his transforming power. But my sisters and brothers, our witness will not be easy. It will be uncomfortable. It may even cause us unbearable pain and suffering And that's because we no longer see the world through our eyes, but instead through the eyes of Jesus. And thus no longer being blinded by the light and seeing through his eyes, we make ourselves aware and available to where God's love and mercy is most needed today, to what that love wants us to call out and to mercifully change. My friends, who in your life do you need to see more clearly with the eyes of Jesus? What situations have you been ignoring or reluctant to see that Jesus is now asking you to see through his eyes? And as a congregation, What situations are being illuminated for us by the light of Jesus? What pain and suffering are we now able to see more fully and clearly through his eyes that we were blinded to before? What needs are we seeing through his eyes that he is calling us as a community of faith to meet? By his light, Jesus will illuminate the oppression, the injustice, the poverty that is in our community and in the world that we live in, that he wants us to see. And we will see the world and our place in it ever so clearly because we are seeing it through the eyes of Jesus. And with that clarity, we can go forward confident in our form of witness and how we are to share God's forgiveness and love with all creation. Confident in what we are to do as individuals and as a congregation. For the good news, my friends, is that we will no longer be blinded by the light, 
because we will be with Jesus. For he needs us to be doing the work of his ministry, assured that he will be present with us in that very moment, alive in us in that very moment, in that very moment when we share God's love and mercy with another, in that very moment when we see through the eyes of Jesus. And may we forever do so in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, my dear friends, I invite you now to just take a moment, a moment in silence, to think who it is or what situations Jesus is asking you to see more clearly, more fully, more lovingly, more mercifully through his eyes. Let's take a moment to do so now. Let us ask Jesus to illuminate our path and to let us see the world through his eyes with our responsive worship song, Christ Be Our Life. I'll ask the congregation to please rise if you're able and let's sing our faith. Christ Be Our Life.
Please be seated. Well, Christ has called us, gathered us together this day to be a part of his church. And he has opened our eyes so that we may see more clearly through his eyes. And doing so, one of the ways Christ asks us to respond is to love each other. And one of the ways that we do that is to pray for each other. Um, Jackie, I'm not sure if there are any prayers for intercession that came forward. No. Are there any prayers of intercession that anyone has within the congregation that like to share? Oh. Uh, no other prayers for intercession? Of course, we'll raise up to the Lord uh, Jackie's uh, family, uh, her sister and, and brother, yep, who are unwell, who we prayed for before. Uh, Wanda, sorry. Um, so Wanda is asking for prayers for her uh, daughter, Jessica, who has um, suffered a, a very long time with an illness. And uh, she's asking for prayers for, for healing and for Jessica to continue to uh, uh, feel better and to continue to glorify God as she has done in her living. Any other prayers? No? Of course, we continue to raise up to the Lord all those known and unknown to us who are waiting for healing in body, mind, or in spirit, all those of every nationality who have been affected by violence and, and war. Uh, we think especially of those in the Ukraine who are affected uh, by that. We continue to pray for all those who are affected by the coronavirus, especially those who suffer with uh, long COVID. Um, because for many of them, there just is no end in sight. And we also continue to raise up your faithful here at St. Andrews as we discern what ministry and mission will mean for us, especially on this day when Christ has opened our eyes. And so my friends, let us now offer our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession to Christ who perfects our prayers. Let us join our hearts once more in prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that since it is to the needy and to the lost and to the least that you sent Jesus, that we can know that he also comes for us. We thank you that in him the majesty of your unending love was born and is known, that love that names us yours and is the power that transforms us. Help us to always celebrate the radiance of Christ. He who was born in Bethlehem to be the light of the world and whose eyes we see the whole world through. We pray today for those who need the gift of grace in their lives. Those who have not understood your loving declaration of their worth in your sight. We pray for those who feel empty, that they may discover the love of God, the love that sent Jesus to this world and fills our souls with peace and hope. We pray for those who feel worthless, that they may discover that Jesus of the cross died for them. We pray for those who feel they are alone, that they may discover that Jesus of the resurrection is by their side. We pray for those blinded by greed and the pursuit of earthly wealth and success, that they may find true riches in the ascended Jesus. Pray that all will come to know that Jesus is still God with us and that in him and through him you inhabit every heart and transform every life open to the spirit of truth. And so we bring to you now in this moment of silent prayer the concerns of our world and those of our hearts buried so deep that only you have the key. 
to unlock. Gracious God, let there be light, understanding, love, and peace throughout your kingdom. And may Jesus forever be our light in the world. God, in your great mercy, hear our prayer. And so bind us together in Christ as we gather up all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and raise them to you with boldness and confidence through the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray saying with one heart and with one voice, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. With regard to the offering, donations can be made and paid online through our partnership with CanadaHelps.org from uh, at HTTPS www.CanadaHelps.org dash EN dash DN dash 56495 and the details are in the, the bulletin for those who get uh, the emails. And donations can also be mailed or delivered here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church 9860 Keel Street, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A3Y4. And you can also consider signing up for PAR, which, will, which are donations which will be deb debited directly from your account on a monthly basis. And if you're interested in PAR, please contact Dorothy or uh, email the church at St. Andrews, Pres, Maple at bellnet.ca. And for the mission moment, Living Waters is a mission of the Presbytery of Lindsay Peterborough that reaches out to marginalized people in downtown Peterborough, Ontario. The Reverend Jonathan Baird regu regularly visits people living on the streets and invites them to the two drop-in programs that Living Waters Mission runs in partnership with the Bridge of Youth Center over there. <clears throat> the programs offer meals, support, counseling, and Christian fellowship. One woman who struggles with mental health and addiction expressed her appreciation. I come here because it is the only place where I feel loved. So if you feel like uh, donating or putting an offering towards these other missions, there's little boxes on the um, offering envelope that you can mark, all right? Do we have any announcements, Dorothy? No? Okay, session meeting for the session members tomorrow night over here at 7.30 p.m. Thank you, I'll hand it back to Robert for now. I'm just waiting for the camera to come on so those online can join us. There we go. Um, by coincidence, uh, Living Waters was a ministry born out of the work of uh, St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in downtown Peterborough. It was the downtown congregation that had served that community for decades. And it is a uh, 
a church that is currently pastored by a dear uh, friend and ministry colleague of mine, the Reverend Deborah Rolls. And uh, her congregation, similar to St. Andrews, the small but mighty, um, continues to work in that community, serving the, the needs of uh, downtown Peterborough. So I would ask as well that you keep them in prayer and in mind. And as Jackie said, thank you for your continued support of God's ministry and mission here at St. Andrews. Let us now dedicate our offering through prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we now return to you what you have first given us and dedicate these our humble offerings faithfully given, joyfully given for the work of your church in this community and around the world. Bless all we offer you, our hearts, our time, and our possessions, and may they be multiplied and used as signs of your commitment to this world and our commitment to you not to be blinded, but to see the world through your eyes, bringing healing and presence to this needy and broken world. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. Before we sing our final hymn this day, I uh, would remind all those gathered in the congregation, especially those who are uh, new to the congregation or who are visiting us today, that there is fellowship hour uh, in the church hall through those doors and that the um, uh, worship team and the elders of St. Andrews uh, graciously invite you to join with them uh, in fellowship time. And so let us sing our hope and our faith with our closing worship song, uh, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Please rise if you're able.
Well, dear sisters and brothers, go and live a life illuminated by the light of Christ. May you not be blinded. Instead, see clearly through the eyes of Christ. And as you do so, may the grace of Christ attend to you. May the love of God surround and embrace you. And may the Holy Spirit comfort and keep you now and forevermore. Amen. And as we go out into this world, let us sing a blessing unto each other with Go Now in Peace. attended today in person and those online and we thank Naomi and Fab immensely, Dorothy and all others who worked so hard behind the lines and uh, also we thank you for your offerings and donations and look forward to seeing you in our future Sundays for service and we have fellowship at the back so you're all welcome. Thank you so much and this ends our recording for today. Thank you.